Hello, people. Good God, you actually went to a funeral or something. Okay, what I'm here today to talk to you about is what I do within the classroom. Do we have any teachers who's actually in front of kids here? Can you raise your hand for me, please? Okay, I hated education, so that meant I hated you. When I was coming up through school, education was not important to me because I didn't see any means to it, uh, which is quite ironic because I'm a teacher now, and what I do is I work with teachers. So essentially what I do is I work with teachers, we look at their curriculum, we then take their curriculum and we digitize it, and we then put it on the iPads, iPhones, or any Android devices. Um, I just go through this. This, they tell you that you need to have something like this sometimes so people might take you serious. Um, one of the most important things up there right now is on the next slide, as far as I'm concerned, is this. I'm a lynda.com author, and what that allows me to do, it allows me to help teachers around the world. And that's my goal and that's my passion, is to try to make sure that some teachers, because I know how it is when you first start out, it's frightened you to death, and what we're trying to do is say that it's not that bad, you just need to get started. I mean, all you need to do is get started. So we have a lot of courses on lynda.com, and I'm doing my, I'm actually finished writing one now, and the one that I'm writing now is based around teachers creating their own content. Everything that I'm going to show you is based on research that I've done when I was doing my master's, and I wanted to make sure that I had some firm and concrete research behind me, because otherwise people say, well, where's your research? It's not great. You're just doing it for the sake of doing it. But I know that there's a problem in classrooms, because I'm in the classrooms every day. I know there's a problem in that kids, a lot of kids are not engaged with what's going on, especially boys. And a lot of them don't like setting up. I know I was one of them with a book in my face and having to read a chapter. I want something that's much more engaging. So what we're trying to do at Chiswick School is we're actually trying to do that. The greatest day in my life was when I realized why I was here on this planet, other than being born. That's the greatest day of my life. And I found my purpose. And my purpose is to help make sure that I can change lives. That's my purpose. That's the sole reason why I'm here. And I do that through helping teachers, through helping students achieve things that they want to achieve. Now, I think personally that the educational sector needs to be disrupted. And I don't care what anybody else say is what I think. And I think that what happens in the classroom sometimes with some of these kids, I just think we're doing them a big disservice. I really do, a big disservice. And people act like they're scared to talk about it. I don't care. We're doing them a big disservice. So the content that we're trying to create at Chiswick School is we're trying to create content which will engage the students, because that, to me, is what it's all about. It's when they walk in, and I don't know whether you saw the first slide, the pursuit of wow, that's what we're trying to get, the pursuit of wow. So it's all about the experience. Some research, developing teacher skills. Now, we sort of have flipped this a little bit, because what we do is we have teachers to work with me. And so what they will do is sit down with me, and the process works like this. They will come with a lesson plan. We then take that lesson plan, and we split it up into sections, so starter, main, plenary. We then look at where digital assets would be applicable for those particular parts of the lesson plan. We then, I create a prototype, take it back to the teacher. What then happens is that the teacher then tests it with some of the students, if they like it, we then finish it. If they don't like it, we go back and make improvements on what we need to make improvements on. But students and the teacher is involved throughout the whole process. To me, it's about revolutionizing the classroom one step at a time, and it's about supporting students, teachers, and parents. And I want you to think of two words or two terms when I'm talking today. One is parental engagement and student engagement, because to me, that, that's what matters. Parental engagement and student engagement. We think by creating our own digital content, what we think that we are helping students who learn in different ways, because all of us learn different, in different ways, we think that we are helping our students progress. So what I like to do now is actually show you 
some of the stuff that we're doing. God bless you. One of the things that we're doing, and I want you to think of it, let me paint the scenario. We have a year seven group of kids. A lot of them are boys who actually come into the classroom, and they're being taught to cook. Well, there's a big problem because you've got about 30 students and usually one teacher in the classroom and maybe a helper. So the issue is you've got to really take health and safety really seriously. So we wanted to find a way that we could have the students understand what each part of the device, the cooker, was about. So what we've done is we've created this app. So what happens is, as an introduction... Using the cooker. The cooker is an important piece of equipment in the food room. We need to know how to use... So what then happens is the students learn about the cooker. So when they come in, they go and touch each part of the cooker. And there's a video which the explains to them what that particular part of the things. cooker does. And what we need to... And then at the end of that, what they can do is they can actually take a quiz and go through, and it will give them feedback at the end. So one of the other things we wanted to do was we wanted to engage the pupils and, like I said, the parents. So what we do is we have a sheet of paper that looks like this. For each one of the cooking utensils that's in there, we put a sheet of paper of that particular utensil down, utensil down. What students then, because at Key Stage 3, every single student has an iPad. Uh, we have one-to-one -one school. So what they do is they put it down, they come in the classroom, and I want you to think again about parental engagement because the students could take the sheets home and they can use them there also. So what happens is they come in, they point this at the cooker, And what happens is, supposedly, a video appears, okay, of the cooker. These two controls are used for the oven okay. and for the grill. If you want to So again, we have that for all parts or everything that they have in terms of the cooker. The other thing that I wanted to show you was Come in here, bear with me. We have about 20%, I think it's about 20% Somalian students in our school. So in order to ensure that all of our students and their parents are actually, they actually understand what's going on, we create digital books. And what we do is we create digital books for every single subject. We also use a lot of QR codes um, and QR codes are used to give extra content, but also if a student comes in the classroom and he or she has forgotten their device, what do they always have with them? Their phones. So they got a QR code on it, they don't miss any learning, they can use that straight away. So that's what we do to start with with year seven. What then happened is they come through. On through we have video. So expectations in humanities, that includes history, geography, and religious studies. And then what we've done is we've broken every single thing down on every single page in Somalia. Now when parents come to parents' evening, there's no doubt about what their child was supposed to do or what the learning is about. No doubt. Okay, so that's two things that we do. Who is the person that is always forgotten when students get their iPads? Parents. Parents are always forgotten. So what we've done is we've built a parent's guide which will help parents learn how to use the iPad. And this is put on all the students' devices at the beginning. So if we come through here, they have that, they come through, we have the head. Welcome to the Chiswick iPad introduction. In this section, our objective is to explain why we feel the introduction of iPads at Chiswick School is important. We've thought about this long and hard. It's if you come on through, we have objectives. And then what we have is we have, if they touch any one of these numbers, parents can actually see what parts of the devices do. So it's our way of trying to introduce them to the devices. If we come on through, what we also have is we have a lot of tutorials. Start Safari. 
the web browser open. Which walks Type in the web them in through the, search bar. the actual how to use the iPad. OK. Other things that we're doing is we have quite a few digital magazines. And one of them that we have is the Tropical Rainforest Magazine, which is the one in the middle. What the teachers, geography teachers wanted to do is they wanted to give the students an experience of actually being in the rainforest. And obviously, you can't take students to the rainforest. But they wanted them immersed in the sound. They wanted them to be able to see exactly what happened. And they wanted some point of reference that the students could actually sort of connect to would give them an idea of what the rainforest was about. So what we've got here. Tropical rainforest. Today's aim. To know where tropical rainforest it's the teacher is annotating, and then to give them some sort of reference, if we click the here, is everywhere in Australia, and yeah. everywhere, just so the kids just know those guys. So that's some sort of reference to uh, well, I mean, tropical rainforest. If we come on through, ah, tropical what we've got here, we've got the table of contents. The big picture. We've got the big picture. On through here, we've got a video in which the teacher actually annotates. On through Looking here, of the major rainforests of the world. this is about where the students have to answer the questions up there and they have to use a map to do so. But instead of them having to pick up a book to find a map, what we've done is we've put a map on the side so they can have the map. They can then take it, put it back when they're finished with it. The other things that we're doing, and this is quite interesting because we want the students, I think personally, and this is my own opinion, I think kids are tested too much in the classroom. And I think if they're going to be tested, sometimes they need to just test themselves to see whether they understand and then move on. So what we've done is we've created this drag and drop. So what students can do is they can come in and they can just drag the words to wherever they think the words might go and then test and see whether they've got it right themselves. I don't need to know that as a teacher all the time. You know, and if you, the kids, if they're anything like me, when I was coming through, what happens is I was not your most attentive student. You know, so I, I wasn't, you know. But I think if I had some stuff like this, I think it's quite possibly that I would have been. Another one that I want to show you now, um, you know, when I say SEN, you know what I'm talking about? Statement of kids. How many of you in your school know what another department is doing in terms of supporting statement of kids? It's very difficult. You got a lot of departments, you got your own thing to do. So, what I'm doing now is I'm putting together this digital book, and what we're doing is we're putting all the content related to SEN inside this book. We also have a video of a student talking about his experience of working with the SEN department. My name is Okocha. I'm 17. What we've also got here is a table of contents. And if we come through, what we then have here is some reference. So if you touch one of them. I'm Sam. I'm the head of the history department at Chiswick School. And I'm going to talk about differentiation within the history department. The resources. So now everybody will know what exactly they do in history. Because if we're teaching the same student, there's a good chance that you might be using a strategy that I don't know about that might like get Tom to do what he needs to do in my lessons. But if you don't know what's going on throughout the school, sometimes it's very difficult. So we're trying to put all that together. And then throughout here, look at the back of they talk about different documents that they use. At the bottom, if you touch any one of these, the document then comes up. It does come up for one second, stupid now. So the document comes up, and then you can see whatever you need to see. Uh, for IT, uh, what we've got supporting the students, we have where we've got uh, audio. As you see, this is still being built, but I just wanted to give you a taste of what's going on. If I touch here. Another support method we have in our department is our new eSafety app that we have. And that's a booklet that the students need to use within their lessons. OK? How much time I got? Oh, I'm good. OK, 
Another thing that we're doing that we think is quite important, we have the music department. What happened was she was having a lot of issues with students forgetting to bring sheets of music in, forgetting to bring their books in, forgetting to bring various things. So what she wanted to do was to create a resource that everything could be compiled into one place so she would not have any confrontations when the students were coming to the door and didn't have what they needed. So what we've done is we've put together this booklet. So when you this come in... This is an audio dictionary. This will help you understand key words for the ukulele unit. Please tap the audio symbols for more information. And this is essential because if they don't understand the the audio, or they don't understand the actual language of the particular subject that they're dealing with, they're going to run into trouble. But then you don't want them asking you all the time, what does something mean? You know? So what we've done is we've actually created uh, a lot of audio dictionaries in most of everything that we've got. Here is the actual uh, lesson in the classrooms and on through. And then what we've got here, this is a task that they need to do about the history. So they've got a video to support them. And what they've also got at the bottom, what they then need to do is they've got a form that they need to fill in to show their understanding of what has happened. That form is attached to uh, a, it's a Google form. So what happens is the teachers can then come in. They can go into the spreadsheet and by one or two clicks, see exactly what's going on with the data from the kids, whether the kids actually understood what she was talking about or he was talking about. Okay? And so what we are doing is we're empowering our teachers to do this. So we walk them through how to create a form. They create the form. They give me the URL. I then embed it into the book. So it's not a one-way street. It's a collaborative uh, adventure all the way through. These are the sheets that I was talking to you about, all the music sheets that we've got. And at the bottom there, there's a QR code uh, which leads to this website right here. What we also have in here is all the, the curriculum, the sheets, so the students can actually go through, again, quiz, and again here we have a drag and drop. So what happens here is they need to understand the different parts of the ukulele. You can now drag your bits there, and if you click Submit, it'll tell you whether you got it right or wrong. You can then go back and try again. And then on through, again, we have some audio. on through and so on. Okay, I've got a time for about one more. And the one that I want to show you is this one. And I want to show you this one because this one was built, this is about 20, I think it's about 20, 24 lessons. So all this is about a teacher wanting to have his whole curriculum when, when the, t the students came in, what they could do is go into their little areas with their iPads and actually go through certain things themselves. Now, let's be on a, no misillusion. We know how it always doesn't go right, okay? So I'm not saying that this is perfect, but what I am saying, I much rather have this as a backup and as a teaching tool with me in the classroom instead of me trying to get to every single student at a time. And if you're honest about it, if you're a teacher, it's almost impossible to give 30 kids in 45 minutes to 50 minutes the serious time that they really deserve. That's if you're honest about it. You can lie to yourself if you want. But if you're honest about it, it's almost impossible. So we've got to find ways to engage these kids. We've got to find ways to help these kids help themselves. It's very, very important. So if you come on through here, what we've got is a table of contents. We've then got a video right there. And I think it's very important that parents be able to see where their students or where their children are learning. So if you tap here, you've then got a panorama of the actual where the kids are actually learning at. If we come on through, we've got all the key tools that they need and so on. We come on through here. We've got all the documents that the students need to be successful for the whole term on through. We've got all the lessons where we've got an image of what they're supposed to be doing. We've got a video of what or how they're supposed to carry out the task. Now what I'm going to do is to cut out the waste. One of the most important things when you do this is to make sure this goes into the correct part We've got a lesson Chapter objective. Three. 
here we're going to learn how to start to cut out our finger joint. Chapter three. Okay, so, so in essence, what we're trying to do is, is we're trying to help these students help themselves. We're trying to engage parents. We're trying to ensure that when these kids come out of school, that these kids have the tools that they need to be successful. And we've got a long way to go, all of us. But if we don't start doing this stuff, guys, we're going to lose a whole generation. I'm telling you, I see it every day. I see it every day. We need to help these kids. And, and, and we've got to find ways to keep these kids engaged in the classroom. I thank you so much for your time. I got 30 seconds left. Two questions, any? Me, sir. Me. I do everything. Everything you saw, I do. That's my job. I teach. I teach. But do you ever had a passion, man, that it goes so deep that it's not work? This ain't work for me. This is, this is what I do. This is what I do. Because we've got to help these kids, man. This is what I do. And where are you hosting all these? Uh... Oh, it goes on the device. It goes straight on the device. It goes straight on the device. So the once it's on the device, they have viewer. access to it all the time. Because parents must be able to see it. Otherwise, what's, what's the purpose? Parents need to be involved in their children's educational lives. Not all of them will be, but we've got to at least make the effort to try to help them to be. Any other questions? Oh, thanks. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine, because what he did is a very good question. What he, the question was, how do you stop them from going ahead and sometimes it's applicable that you don't stop them. But sometimes it is applicable that you do stop them. And they can go through, but there's a lot more information. This is a guide. This is not what they use to do their lessons themselves. This is not them coming in the classroom and you sit back and say, go for it. It's not that. This is a guide to help them understand what you are giving them. That's all that is. That's all it is. One more. Come on, somebody got one more. Yes. What? what platform was it created on? I use every single thing Adobe has. I taught myself every single thing. Every single thing. So I use all of it. It's just the Adobe platform. <laughs> it's the truth. Thank you so much for your time. Sorry I had to rush through. Okay. <laughs>